15 b he said if so be that we suffer with him that we may be we may be also glorified together so if we have suffered with him then we stand also to benefit in his glory the number nine the number nine we are or we also identify with him in his security he has secured a place for us he has secured a position for us in heaven he secured a place in heaven for us that's colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4 again he said he has made us to sit with him in the heavenly places so what are the benefits of we being identified with christ christ identify himself first now, the first thing I want us to see here today is that our identification with Christ started first with Christ, being identified with us. So, he started the identification matter by identifying with us. Then, being identified with us, we got our identity by him identifying with us. Christ identified himself first with man and became sin for him that it might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus but if you look at that scripture that scripture is not talking about jesus becoming a sinful one he only became a sin, not become sinful praise god and through that we became the righteous one of god in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 2 amplified classic put it this way for our sake he made christ for our sake second corinthians chapter 5 verse 2 he said for our sake he made christ virtually to be seen who knew second corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 he said for our sake he made christ virtually to be seen who knew no sin so that and through him we might become and build with view and being in an example of righteousness of God. Look at said, but someone chapter 5, verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. We are talking about the work. Chapter 5, verse 2. Amplify classic. Thank you. All right. Here yeah, indeed. Here yeah, indeed, in his present. In, 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 in this present abode body, we sigh, we sigh and groan. No. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. He said, For our sake, he made Christ virtually to be seen. Who knew no sin? So that in and through him, we might become endued with, viewed, endued with, viewed as being in an example of righteousness of God. What we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by the goodness by his goodness so what happened is that christ through christ we became the righteousness of god now because he has become a sin for us and by the fact that he became a sin for us we now enjoy being the righteous one of god that is what qualify us to stand before God without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority complex. And that is what Hebrew says. Let us come boldly that we may approach the throne of God. This was made possible because Christ first identified with us and through him being identified with us, we gain our identity from him. Like that Acts chapter 17 verse 28 said, he said, in him we live function and through him we have our identity through the fact that he died for our sins he became a sin for us and through him we have our identity praise god he became man's substitute jesus became man's substitute and died in a in the place of man he died to make man live to make him well and healthy christ died now, the redemptive work is not only to save us from sin. The redemptive work also is what guarantee our health, is what guarantee our well-being. So every time you know 
and you live in the consciousness of who you are in Christ Jesus, I tell you the truth, sin cannot lay hold over your life. No, I'm not saying that sin cannot make an attempt over you, but it cannot make attempt. Now, whatever symptoms it brings to you, they are lying symptoms, but when you come with understanding of the fact that you have been identified with his death, with his burial and resurrection, which end all forms of pain, all forms of sickness, all forms of calamity that you can stand in that identity and refuse to allow the sickness to stay in your body praise god you can resist the devil you can resist him from placing a sickness over you but that must come with deep sense of understanding of who we are in christ jesus one of the things I would like to say clearly that the clarity of your identity, the clarity of my identity determines the magnitude, the magnitude of our destiny. Until you understand who you are, who I am in Christ Jesus, our destiny will not function the way God wants it to function. The discovery of your destiny of your identity is the beginning of the manifestation of our destiny. The discovery of our identity is the beginning of the manifestation of our, of our destiny. That is, our destiny in God can only manifest we discover our identity. I dare also say to you that the discovery of our identity is the beginning of the manifestation of the supernatural lifestyle. When you understand who you are, when I understand who I am in Christ Jesus, then I begin to live in the supernatural. When I'm talking about the supernatural, I'm talking about living beyond the natural, living like Jesus lived, living the life that redemption provided for us. And that is one of the things that strengthens us, that helps us to live a life of victory, no matter the attacks of the devil. So when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus, then it brings some great manifestation of the power of God. Another thing that the, our union with Christ does is that it makes man strong and victorious over all his enemy. When you understand that we have been united with Christ and you live by that understanding of our union with Christ, no devil can try you. No devil, even when they make attempt, they will never overcome us. Another thing that happens is that when we understand that, it makes us happy and prosperous. It makes us happy and prosperous to take a man to heaven. Another thing that happens is that when we understand the fact that we are united with him, then we will have the confidence that I will make heaven. It takes a man to, to heaven to live forever with himself and God. You know, with Christ means that we are crucified to the world and the world to us. When we are talking about being identified with Christ, we are talking about we being dead to the world and the world also is dead to us. Let me take that again. You know, with Christ means that we are crucified to the world and the world to us we are crucified to the world and the world to us so these days i wonder when i see the manifestation of the things of the flesh and we see the manifestation and we are mingling with the world i wonder it's a loss of our identity it's a crisis identity is a identification crisis when you see believers that want to live the same way unbeliever lives their life it's because we have forgotten who we are we have forgotten who we are in union with Praise God. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Amplify Classic. Look at the way we, ha we, we are. It said, I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Amplify Christ Classic. It said, I have been crucified with Christ. In him, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, he said, in him, I have shared his crucifixion. You know, I've said that before. It is no longer I who live. But Christ the Messiah lives in me, and the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in by adherence to and reliance and on and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So what happens to believer? 
in identification with the work of redemption, then you will come to understand that the life we now live, we don't live our own life. We live the life of God. If truly I'm living the life of God, does my life reflect God? Now there's something I want us to very, very careful of. The world will not judge you based on who you are in Christ. It will judge you based on your act, your behavior, and what you do. In the church, we can judge you based on who you are in Christ, but not your behavior. I need to explain. The world will never judge us based on who we are, based on your identification with Christ. But my identification with Christ must bring me to a point that my act, my behavior, my speech reflect Christ. What does that mean? Now, if you are in church and you know we said because you, yeah, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, we said sin cannot have dominion over me. Yes, for the law of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, and all that. Yes, that is correct in the church, and that is why in the church, when you see somebody does wrong and he has repented, we don't look at you as a sinner in the church. But if you try it outside, the world does not understand who you are in Christ Jesus. They only understand who you are. They receive you by your act, by your behavior, by the things you say and by the things you do. But they cannot judge you based on who you are in Christ Jesus. I hope I made that clear. What I'm saying in essence is that yes, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you can stand before God without inferiority complex without the sense of guilt and you can still communicate with him you can tell him lord i'm sorry and that is over but if you do the same thing that you have done and you do it around the people that don't say understand this work that will not work for them because they will only see you based on what you do but our union with christ is supposed to bring an internal work so that men will begin to see us like jesus will act and speak in every situation and circumstances so when we become united with christ it must affect every area of our life galatians chapter 6 verse 14 he said but far be it from me to glory in anything or anyone except in the cross of our lord jesus christ the messiah through whom the world has been crucified to me and to the world now, that's where I got that word. That when we are in union with Christ, it means that we have been crucified to the world and the world is crucified to us. And there is nothing that you can see about the world in me. Neither can you see anything that has to do with the world with me. Look at this. He said, but far be it from me to glory in anything or in anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, through whom the world has been crucified to me. So the world is crucified to us and we are crucified to the world and I to the world. Can you see it? And that is why the world, there should be no reflection of the world at all. If we are truly united with Christ, because we are united into his death, into his burial. You know, it was the death of Christ to sin that killed sin. That a man is not a sinner because he sinned. A man is a sinner because he has the nature of sin. Now, when we come to come and be in union, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we become united with him, what has happened is that he destroyed the nature that commits sin, and we have his nature. And that's what Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is saying. We, are no, longer, we no longer live because we are new creature. Praise God. You know, with Christ, you know, with Christ means there is nothing in us that the world desires or that we desire of the world. When we are talking about we are in union with Christ, what that simply means is that our union with Christ means that there is nothing in us that we make the world to desire me or that we that I would desire in the world. What is it that unbeliever can see tag around you? Why is it that unbelievers can still see you and feel comfortable around you and do some things around you? Why is it that I am still seeing something an unbeliever and I desire it? Something is wrong. My union with Christ is to kill every cravings of the world. Glory to God. Union with Christ means we are free from sin. Satan 
and from sickness and failure. Our union with Christ is set us free from sin. I said this. I, you know that that there are some things I now in the body of Christ when we start making some teachings and uh, I hear teachings and people talks about hey don't, are we not giving the people the last sense to sin with this teaching? May why be a deep truth of God. Now people have been used to being preached and being taught to about sin, 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 sin that they have not come to understand the power of righteousness that we through. A lot of people don't understand it. We have had too much of sin. Neither am I giving to, I don't play with sin. Get me clear. But what I'm saying is that let us, when you hear the word of God, the power that comes, that flow through our union with Christ is the power of righteousness that empower us not to ever crave for things of the world. This power, he comes and makes sin to be irritative to our spirit. If you have not come to that point that sin becomes irritative, then check your union with Christ. I said union with Christ means there is nothing in us. There is nothing in me. And that's why even when Jesus was in his assembly, the Bible says the king of this world, they came to him and they found nothing in him. When they come to you, what can they find in you? When the world come to you, can they find any of their property in you? Can they find any of their mindset in you? Can they find any of their perception and, your, and their mindset? Can they find the mindset of the kingdom in you? That is our union with him. What does our union mean? Union with Christ means we are free from sin. Sir, take it from me. If you understand our identity, if you understand your identity in Christ Jesus, it will prevent you from sinning. It will make you to become master and lord over sin. Because that is what Jesus eventually did. When he came to die for the sins of the world, he killed power. He killed the nature that produces sin. And because I live by his own nature, then sin is no longer something I toll around with. Yes, pastor, are you saying sometimes you don't fall? No, what I'm saying to you is that I do not practice sin. And if anything happens, which does a long time, I can't remember, last. If anything happens, then there is a sense of remorse. There is a godly sorrow that fills the heart. That how did I get into this kind of thing? But there are some Christians today, they get into some act, and you can't even find them even being remorse you can't see the fact that something is wrong is because you don't understand your union with christ what does it mean it means what is our union with christ mean it means we are sons of god with power capable of representing god and exercising the full power of anthony when we are talking about union with christ we are talking about the fact that we are sons of god with power Capable of representing God, uh, capable of representing God, and full of Anthony. When you talk about power of Anthony, because we are in union with Him, what that means is that we have the power to act in the place of Jesus here on earth. That is what our union with Christ does for us. That means I am the Jesus that people see. I am Jesus that people can relate with. I am the Jesus that can lay hands on the sick and they recover. I am the Jesus that they can see and I can cast demons and everything and that is because i am united with him and because i am united with him his power flow through my spirit and i can act in the place of god glory to god that is what it means to be united with god if every seeking sinner could see that if every seeking sinner could see that he died that christ died for them on the cross I'm telling you, one of the problems sinners have is that they have not been able to see what Christ has done. And they've not been able to have the power to receive him. Every man was nailed to the cross with Christ. Every man was nailed to the cross with Christ. And every sin, sickness, and pain that man ever had or ever will, will have was put upon him. Now what that means is that Every man, now, I'm not born again alone. Every man was nailed to the cross. Even when you were not born again, 
Christ will not come, go on the cross again because someone is to be born again. So every man was nailed on the cross. But it takes us to be, to be in identity with the work that Christ did. For us to enjoy the benefit and the power that flows from that finished work. So every man, every man was nailed to the cross the same way Jesus was laid to the cross. And how does that happen? He happens by faith. Every time I receive the life of Christ, it flows the power inside of me to make me see myself being on the cross when Jesus was on the cross. And that's what happened when I got into that is that sin has been destroyed. Everyone was nailed to the cross with Christ. And every sin, sickness, pain that any man ever had, and this is where the problem is, and even will have, was put on him. Now, I want to say this statement with careful, very being careful. Do you know that every sin man will commit, every sin man commits, every sin man commits now, and the ones that will be committed has been atoned for. Once and for all. Oh, does that give you license to sin? No. The truth of the matter is that the sin a believer commits tomorrow, Christ does not have to go to the cross again. He has done it once and for all. Now, that, that provision is still there. So, he did it once and for all. So, you can see even unbelievers being into that. Now, they are not yet believers, but they too were nailed to the cross. But until they receive the light of God, the light of the gospel shining in the heart, they begin to see the finished work and they think that you will come into the benefit and the power of redemption. Union with Christ. Until every believer recognize this fact and believe and identify ourselves with Christ, we will not get the benefit that we are made possible by this sacrifice. It will take us to understand what Christ did for us to enjoy it. If he bore our sin, no longer we require, no longer are we require to have them or be bound by them. Now, look at that. If Christ has bore our sin, then you and I, we are no longer bound to be bound by sin because he has destroyed the nature, the nature that produces sin. The tree that produces sin, he has destroyed. So the day I receive Christ, now that's let me make us let me make a, a bit of adjustment. Something you know, when we hear believer, we'll say, When did you receive when did you give your life to Christ? Now, most we talk about when we got born again, but I think we look very well. When we got born again, it is not that we gave up Christ, our life was not good enough to be given to Christ. What at the point of salvation is that we receive the life of Christ, not that we gave our life. Glory to God. Now, when we will give our life to Christ is when we have received his life and he has made it his own life that we can give our life to Christ. So when we say, when we want to talk about okay, we should say that I received the life of Christ because he said I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance so our dirty life is not what he wants he doesn't need it because he has destroyed us so we can we receive his life that is what makes us to be born again but when we come to consecration to service that is when we give to him so I think we need to balance that and that alone can make a lot of difference in a victorious Christian we used to think that we gave our life to him. No, we receive his life, and when he has modified our life, he has made our life new. We have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away, and that is where we can give our life in surrender, in service, in worship. So it is not when we got born again that we, we gave our lives to him. That's just by the way. Praise God. I said, if he, are, if he bore our sins, no longer are we required to have them or be bound by them. If he bore our sickness, no longer must we suffer them again. Our union with Christ will help me, will help you, or let me put it this way, it will empower you to live a life free of sickness and pain. That's what I'm saying. And I mean it. It is the same redemptive work that saved me that healed me. 
We've only stayed with the fact that I am saved by, by Christ. Yes, redemptive war. makes me. I got that by faith. That same redemptive war. If you will apply that same faith, then you should not have sickness in your body. This may be strange for you to understand. Because it's the same finished work. It's the same redemption work. I believe in it. He said, I believe and I, I speak. By it, I am saved. We believe in the heart. And by confession, we believe. The same way I can confess the finished work and sickness will no longer have hold over my life. Do you know by union with Christ, sickness is not supposed to put tabernacle into your life. You are supposed to resist him because you are united with Christ and our union with Christ is what saved us, is what delivered us from the power of sickness. Satan has no legal right to put any, any sin. Satan has no legal right to put any sin or sickness upon us. And we have redemptive light, redemptive right to reject such works of the devil in our lives. Saints of God, Satan has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. He cannot put sickness upon us unless we give consent and fail to resist him in faith. Satan has no right to put sickness except you accept it, except you give your consent. He can't. Why? Because we are united with him. Praise God. The major part that I want to, that the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart so much is to look at how do I identify? How do I identify with Him? Praise God. How do we identify? How to identify ourselves with Christ? Identify ourselves. Now we've talked about identifying with us. So, how do I identify myself with Christ? Number one, by making proper confession of sin. Now, that's the starting point for anybody that is not a believer. That one is, has nothing so much to do with you as a believer. So, the first point of how to unite with Christ is making confession of sin. What does this mean? This is recognition, recognition that Christ died on the cross to atone for our sin. And that they were actually bore by him. When we confess that we are sinners and that he bore our sins on the cross, we thus identify ourselves with him in his work of atonement and cleansing from all sins, following immediately. So, the first stage for any man to identify with Christ is to confess his sin. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from every unrighteousness don't stay too long on that the second one which is where we're going to stay sometime when, when we talk about being united with Christ I'm talking about I want to show you about eight different steps on how to identify ourselves with Christ. The first one is by making proper confession of sin. And the second one is by crucifying the old man. By crucifying the old man. is the second way by which we identify ourselves with Christ. The old man is the of the devil. The old man is the spirit and nature of the devil working in us before we are saved from sin. When we talk about the old man, we are talking about the spirit and the nature, which is the nature of sin. Like I said, that a man is not a sinner because he sinned. A man is a sinner because he has the nature of sin that was inherited by the first Adam. The old man or the devil constantly works to regain dominion over us after salvation. The devil is always working hard to gain dominion, to put, to, to aid us to commit sin. Do you know that the devil cannot put sin on you? He can't put sin on you. You only allow him to make you get into sin. And every time any child of God gets into sin, what happens is that we are out of touch with him. We are out of, we lost 
the understanding of our identification with him because if we remember that i am identified with christ that means i will remember that sin has no dominion over me so when there is a thought coming into my heart that will lead to sin because i understand my identity i'll be able to stop it right there ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 he said, neither give place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27b. He said, neither give place to the devil. So we must be on guard and refuse to give a place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10 to 18. He's talking about we do not war. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. So we are looking on how to be identified with Christ. We started by the fact that Christ identified with us first by becoming a sin for us. No, Christ was not, he, did, he didn't become sinful. He only became sin. So if he has become a sin, then we too should not have sin in our body. Neither can we not get it to the point of becoming sinful. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. In your experience, what is pleasing to the Lord? Let your life be constant proofs of what is most acceptable to him. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the fruitless deed and enterprises of darkness. But instead, let your lives be so contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. Let our life be contrary to the works of darkness. Verse 12. Take no bad. So he said, for it is a it is a shame even to speak of or mention the things that such people practice in secret. Verse 13. But when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. James chapter 4, verse 7. He says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and it will flee from you. So we are talking about crucifying the old man. Every time we crucify the old man, let me tell you, the old man will always contend with the spirit man. He will always contend. He will always want to gain superiority. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. He said, be sober and be vigilant. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober and be vigilant. Because our adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, Beware balanced. I love the, the way I amplify it. He put it. He said, Beware balanced, great, sober of mind, vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, who is your enemy? Our enemy is the devil. That enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaming in fierce anger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. He's looking for someone to seize. He doesn't have the power. When you give him a consent, when you give him a space, he goes a mile. Verse 9. Verse 9. Thank you. We stand him. him. Be firm in faith against his onset. Rooted. Established. Strong. Immovable. And determined. Knowing the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood the whole body of christians throughout the world whatever is happening to you is not only to you it's to the brotherhood every attempt of the devil want to lure us into sin is the same with your brothers it's the same with your sisters and if any brother in this community of believer in this community of faith can stand his ground against sin and can decree and can declare i have been crucified Christ. Nevertheless, I live the life I live. I live it by the Son of God, and live cannot commit sin. This life I live cannot be inflicted by affliction. This life I live cannot go with greed. This life I live is the life of love. Every time we declare it, we make those declarations. We render the power of the devil useless in our life, and that is the power of our identification. Glory to God. Oh, just because the devil seeks dominion and we are tempted to yield to sin is no sign that we have the old man in us or that we are in union, the spirit or the nature of Satan. 
What that I'm saying here is that because the devil still wants to gain dominion, he still wants to have his way into our lives, does not mean that we carry the nature, the spirit of the devil. No. He only wants to, you know, he's not somebody that gives up easily. No, he never gives up easily. He always wants to find his way. But every time crucify the old man, it is a symbol of our union with Christ. And that will always make us to be always ahead of the devil. It is only when we yield to sin, again, that we are in harmony with the devil. Every time we yield to sin, is a time that we are in harmony with the devil, not because his nature is back in us. By the crucifixion of the old man, which simply means that we recognize that we are freed from him, we are freed from sin, from sin, we are freed from the devil, and we no longer in any respect. When we're talking about being crucified, we are talking about the fact that we are saying to the, I am free from you. There is therefore no, no, no power of the devil that can overcome you. We must consider ourselves dead to him, dead to the devil, that he is dead to us. Paul says in Romans chapter 6 verse 2, he said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to see live any longer daring? How he said, God, for, how can we say we are dead to sin? We have crucified the old man. We are in union with Christ. How can we continue to sin? God forbid. Certainly not. How can we? How can we? Who died to sin live in any longer? It is not possible. That's a question mark. It's a question mark. So our union with Christ, when we understand the power of our union, we understand that we have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified to the nature of sin. And the nature I live now is the nature of God. And the nature of God cannot sin. That is the nature I live by. Every time we say that, then we are in union with Christ. And every time the devil hears you declare that, he understands that you know who you are. And when he knows that you know who you are, he does not come around you to, flow, to, to mess around with you. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And one version called Debbie Bible says, For me, the thought, we who have died to sin, how shall we still live in it? Far be it. Now, we that we are dead to sin, how can we live by it? But faith. In the finished work of redemption, man must reckon or count himself to be dead, to sin and alive to God. That is, he has nothing more to do with sin and everything to do with God. When we're talking about crucifying our body, crucifying old man we are saying that i had said that uh, you know there is a song that that rang in my spirit this morning i am married to jesus satan leave me alone i am married to jesus satan leave me alone my husband is coming to take me away to everlasting home that's a confession of our union. When that son says, I am married to Jesus, that is union. That is union. Every time you can be bold enough to say, Satan, I am married to Jesus, leave me alone. What you are saying is that I have no part to do with you. The nature of sin is destroying me. And I tell you the truth, if you can declare this from time to time, you will suddenly find out that sin cannot crop into your life. The temptation to sin. You know, temptation is, is not a sin. It is when we yield to temptation. So it will only end at the point of temptation. When the temptation comes and you understand your identity, that ends the temptation. Oh, Satan, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I live, I live by the life of the Son of God. And the life of the Son of God cannot do this. And that he ends it. That's he destroyed the power of sin. That confession, he destroyed the power of sin. Glory to God. Believers are to reckon sin as a thing of the past and as none existed as far as he is concerned. Every believer, we must recognize and accept that sin is no longer in existence as far as I'm concerned. Is in existence with people in the world. But every time we give to 
generation to sin, which is not our life. Our na new nature cannot understand sin. Our new nature that we live by, which is the nature of God, the nature of righteousness, the nature that thinks the, the things of heavenly things. Believer, we are to reckon that God is all and all and only and the only thing that matters in life. The way we crucify ourselves the way we crucify the old man is to reckon that God is all and all and nothing more is important in life. That is crucifixion. That is crucifixion. We must reckon that we are new creature in Christ. An old life dead and that we no longer live as we used to live in sins lost and the damn of our soul. The old life is past and the new life is here. The devil has no more part in us. So we reckon on him dead. We reckon on the devil being dead. We don't give him attention. That is the way to crucify our flesh. To crucify the old man. The old life, sin, the old man, and the things of the past are still in existence. But as far as we are concerned, they are not because we are dead to them. If I am truly dead to sin, then I don't see any sin. Oh, am I bragging? I'm not bragging. I'm saying this from the point of understanding. And that is one of the things that identification, understanding your identification does with us. He helps us to be stronger than the devil. He helps us to be stronger than the temptation and the ways he push things towards us because we know who we are in Christ Jesus. That alone is a power to live by. Glory to God. Don't give, don't give sin too much attention. Don't give sin too much attention. Don't give sin too much attention. Every time we give too much attention to sin, you find that you always... <laughs> there's, something, there's, there's something I want to put to us. Anytime I see somebody come in and say, Pastor, pray with me. I don't want to sin. Or, I don't want to sin again. Most times I see ignorance. You don't pray not to sin again. You don't try to stop sinning. What do you do? You take the finished work because the Bible says it took our sin. It took our infirmities. It took, it replaced us in place of sin and make us to become the righteousness of God. And if you can understand that, you don't need to stop to sin. You act in that finished work by faith and you see no sin in your life again. I tell you the truth. If you can go with this, you will always lead a victorious life over sin. Somebody can say, is this man bragging? I'm not bragging. It's something I've practiced over the years. Understanding of the fact that I'm united with him. If you are united with him, you are united with the finished work. And the finished work, finish, it finished sin. Huh? It finished sin. And because he finished sin, and that is why Paul can write, the, uh, sin cannot have dominion over me. Why? Because the law, the, 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 law, the law of life in Christ Jesus has set me free. The law of sin and death. Therefore, sin shall not have dominion. It was an understanding of, the, of our identity, of his identity with Christ. Saying that I am dead to sin. I am dead to the devil. No matter what he's doing, I don't care. Number three, by faith in Christ. Number three, what is the third way to be identified with Christ? By faith in Christ is another way to be identified. This includes faith in his name. To be identified with Christ is to believe in his name. Acts chapter 3 verse 16, the Passion Translation he said, faith in Jesus' name as you this man. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Look at what was said here. He said, and his, and his name. Yes, 3.16. He said, faith in Jesus' name as you this man standing before you. This is the faith that comes through believing Jesus' name. That has made the crippled man walk right in front of your eyes. 
you know the top the what we are looking at now is how do we identify with christ number one is confession of sin number two is crucifixion of the old man and number three is by faith in christ and this faith in christ include faith in his name number one Acts chapter 4 verse 12 that same typity is that there is no one else who has the power to save us for there is only one name Acts chapter 4 verse 12 there is no one else who has the power to save us for there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience 412 salvation the name of Jesus 412 there's only one name that we have our salvation so we must have faith in that name look at it verse 12 and there is and there is salvation in and through no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by and in which we must be saved. What do we have faith again in? In union with God, we must have faith in his blood. Romans chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. King James Version. He said, be justified freely by his, by his grace. Through the redemption through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a probitation through faith in his blood. Through faith in his blood. That is another way to be identified with him. Number one, we must have faith in his name. We must have faith in his blood. And number three, we must have faith in his word. We must have faith in his word. That is how to be united with him. In John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will. And it shall be done unto you. Abiding in him means. Union in him. And the union in him. Is evidential in the fact that his word abide in us. He said if ye abide in me. Abide in me is union in me. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. Let's leave that. Another thing you must have faith. You must have faith in his death. You must have faith in his death. We've said that we must have faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 8. You can look at it. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 19. We must believe that what Christ did we must believe that Christ died for us and we must believe in the finished work number four, the number four way to identify with Christ is by walking in the light by walking in the light is another way to be identified with him John chapter 1 verse 7 to 9 John chapter 1 verse 7 to 9 the same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be Verse 8. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Verse 9. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Now, another way to be united with God, with Christ, which strengthens us and brings power into us, is by walking in light. What does it mean to walk in light? Walking in the light means. As we get to know the truth, as we get to know the no truth, we accept it and obey it and makes us, and it will make us free. Now, to walk in the light is to see the truth. The truth is revealed. You believe the truth and you live by the truth and it will set you free. In John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32, he said, they said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciple. Indeed. And ye shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. So one of the ways to walk, to be in union with him, is to walk in the light. What does it mean to walk in the light? Walking in the light is growing in grace and in the knowledge of Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 4 to 10. Number 5. What's another way? The next way, the next way to be in identification with Christ is by taking up our cross daily to follow Christ. What is, does this mean? Number 5 is to daily pick our cross and follow Christ. This means forsaking all that the gospel requires one to give up and loving the Lord with all our heart and our soul. When we're talking about carrying our cross and following him daily, what it simply means is that we forsake everything that the gospel forbid us to do. And that is what it means to carry our cross. Now, what that means is that it's not something we naturally we want to do. But what we do is that when we see what he has said in his word, then we follow him. I said, thinking about our cross daily means forsaking all that the gospel requires one to give up and loving the Lord with all our heart and our soul. What does it mean? It is the willingness to pay whatever price it costs to be the follower of Christ. It is to pay whatever price it costs me to follow Christ. That is what another way to be in union with Christ. I remember some years back when I finished school, and I was to get back into the banking industry, they were saying that, as at that time, entering point, you must be between 24 and 26. And for me, by the time I was graduating, in fact, I almost missed service here. Because by 30 years, <laughs> you will not go for service here. But I narrowly entered. So you know what it means. By the time I'm finishing service here, I was already 30. And everywhere was locked down. That if you cannot be 24, and a lot of people were doctoring their CV and fortifying their age. And I said to myself, and I said to people, if God will not give me a job with my age, let it be. By the grace of God, I, I, used, to do, I used to work with GT Bar before I went back for my HND. Most of the managers were people that lost me. And I remember vividly that one of the MDs, I will not mention him now, sat with me and helped me to doctor my CV. You know, there are some people that fortify their age and are not good at it. And if you meet smart people on interview, they can flow you. Because by the time you say you finish primary school at the age of eight, because you didn't do your calculation very well. I know somebody that lost a job, that lost a very golden opportunity because somebody that was smarter than him on the interview looked at his CV and said, no, something is wrong with this CV. And look, calculate it. And by the time he brought out the thing, and you, everybody in the interview panel looked at you that truly nobody can finish at this age in secondary school. But this man sat with me and helped me to draft a new CV. And that was the last day the man saw me. Oh, did I suffer for it? I suffered. Oh, man. That was a man that has the power to bring me back into GTB with whatever grade I came out with. But because I want to identify with Christ, I'm in union with him. And I said to him, if I, I said, I'm coming back. That was the last day. Today, we have never come in physical contact. I only see him on TV and everywhere we go. I, I mean, by now, he has even forgotten about it. That was a price to pay. Oh, did I suffer? I suffered. Many times I would trek from Akiode to Allen Junction to go to church. When I could have taken the good job, that was a cross I was carrying for many years to like go back into the banking industry and getting back into the industry. I got back as a as a as a uh, contract staff. You know, there are two different types of people in banking. There are people that are called bankers, and there are the ones they call banker. Bankers are different from the bankers. Bankers they don't count money. Banker are the are the guest tellers. <laughs> they tell us which a secondary school graduate can do. They don't even have IDs to post. And that was how I got back into the banking industry. But this God that is very faithful, 
I keep, prom- I keep developing myself. I keep growing myself in the banking industry. And suddenly another bank needed a clearing officer. Who doesn't mind HND? And because I have been doing clearing job, and that was, I, I got into full banking again. Yes, it was late. But God made me happy that I can get back into it because I paid that price. I identified with the fact that he's my Lord, he's my king, and I'm ready to pay the price. I suffer for it. That's the truth. It takes us taking our cross daily. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 to 28. TPT. Is that a massive crowd follow Jesus? Luke 14. Verse 25 to 28, TPT. As massive cried, follow Jesus. He turned to them and said, When you follow me as my disciple, you must put aside your father, mother, wife, sister, and your brother. Yes, you will even seem as though you hate your own life. This is the price you will pay to be considered one of. I follow her. I love this TPT. I just found the, I just fall in love with this version. He said, when you follow me as my disciple, put aside your father, your mother, your wife, your sister, your brothers. Yes. You will even seem as though you ate your own life. This is the price you will pay to be considered one of my follower one of the people that is identified with me verse 27 one of the people that is identified with me and anyone who comes and anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own or are you seeing it now? He said you carry your cross. Now you identify his cross with his cross and you carry it as if it's your own cross. Or it cannot be considered as my disciple. Verse 28. Thank you. So don't follow me without considering what it, it will cost you. Don't follow me. Jesus was going to say, don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For us to be identified with Christ, we must first sit down to count the cost. We must be willing to pay the price. Now, we've been looking at that scripture from different versions. When we say, who among you want to be in the tower, who will not first sit, sit down? Now, he wasn't really talking about the tower. He's talking about the cost of being a disciple. He's talking about the cost of being identified with Christ. Look at verse 28 in this Passion Translation. He said, so don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who will construct a house before first sitting down to estimate the cost to complete it? To carry your cost, to follow Jesus daily is to count the cost. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to, 20, to 30 in the Passion Translation still. Then Peter blundered out. Here we are, we are, we are, we have given up everything to follow. Peter blood out. Here we are. We have given up everything to follow you. What reward will there be for us? Verse 28. Jesus responded, listen to the truth. In the age of the restoration of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will have 12 thrones of your own. You will govern the 12 tribes of Israel. 29. For anyone who has left behind your cross, their home and property, living family, brothers or sisters, mothers or fathers, or children for my sake, will be, will be repaid a hundred times over and will inherit eternal life. Verse 30. But Many who push themselves to be first will find themselves last. And those who are willing to be last will find themselves to be first. Daily cross taking means as one learns truth, he must conform to it daily. When we talk about carrying our cross daily, it's as we learn about 
word of God, we must be committed to live by it in conformity to the truth. That's what it means to carry our cross daily. And that is union with Christ. When we talk about union with Christ, whatever the cross may be that we are called upon to bear, whatever the cross may be that we are called upon to bear, we must carry it in conformity with God. In conformity to the will of God. Now, what does that mean? It talks about the renewal of our mind. Can you please give me Romans chapter 12, verse 2? I love the way TBT put it. Oh, glory to God. Okay, start from verse 1. Romans chapter 12, from verse 1. Let's look at it, but I'm going to verse 2. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous message? I encourage you to surrender yourself to God. To be his sacred living sacrifice. And live in holiness. Experiencing all that delight his heart. That is what it means to carry our cross daily. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Look at verse 2. I love the way verse 2. He says, stop imitating the ideas and opinion of the culture around here. The culture of the world. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think union with Christ. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in, the, in His eyes. That is what it means. Number six. In obeying the truth is denied. To carry our cross and fall in daily. Abandon selfishness in obeying God. Abandon, we are not considering our interest. Totality. Regardless of our personal interest. That is what it means to daily carry our cross. Number six. By walking and living in the spirit. By walking and living in the spirit. You know, this means that we seek the spirit and the word of God and that we always follow the leading of the spirit rejecting anything in our lives that will be contrary to the word of God and our best interest. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? It means to put to death all the works of the flesh and cultivate the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is actually one. And what is that one? It's love. But love but so many other traits. Self-control, temperance. That is how to be in union. That is how to be in identification. So you can read Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 26. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 to 7. Jude 20 to 24. 1 Peter chapter 3. Chapter 1 verse 3 to 9. Then number 7. I'll close now. Huh? I'll close now. The number seven is by constant prayer and study of the word of God. If you are going to be in union with God, the way to be in union with Christ is by, is by constant prayer and study of the word of God. This is a winning combination. Along with praying, this should be constant. There should be constant meditation in the word of God and a cheerful obedience to the word of God. Thus, through focused meditation and study, we get to know the fine point of truth and of spiritual leading of God. Men are required. There are five different things that we are required to do with the word of God. I can't explain this. Number one is to study the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Number two, we are to continue in to know the truth. We are to continue in the word of God and to know the truth. You can see that in John chapter 8 verse 31 to 32. Number four, three, number, sorry, number one, we are to study the word of God. Number two, we are to search the word of God. That you will find in John chapter 3 verse 39. You search and investigate according to Amplified Classic. Then number three, we are to continue in it and know the truth. 
Number four, we are to obey the word of God. And number five, we are to meditate in it day and night. If you can do these things, you will find yourself always in union with Christ. And lastly, it is by faithful work. It's by faithfully working for God and consecrated service to others. Service to others. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, I think, he said, let us not forsake the assembly of the brethren. So every time we serve together with the people of God, it's in union with Christ. We are in union with Christ. And every time we serve in the vineyard, it is a symbol of the fact that we are united with Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. So the power of identity is that he empowers us to live out the supernatural life. When you identify, when you identify with Christ, then you discover that without much, without struggle, you will live that supernatural life. And I, that is what I want you to see. That Christ first identified with us and by his identity with us, we also have identity with him. Thank God for that Acts chapter 17 verse 28. He said, in him we live and function. We will live and function. I love that scripture. He said through him that we live and function. If you are not in Christ Jesus, you cannot live and function properly. If you are not in union with Christ, with the finished work, we cannot live and function as everyone will want us to live and function. Not only do we live and function in him, we have our identity in him. King James Version says in him we live we move and have our being. That is, in him we are united. Glory to God. We want to thank God for today and we want to thank God for, your, for listening. God bless you in Jesus' name. It's time for questions. Any question? Are there questions that, have, that people have sent in online? Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Let's just lift up our hands and thank him and bless his name. I love that Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, my old man is dead and I'm alive by a new man. It wasn't a repaired life. It was a, a, a recreated life. I love what scripture says in 1 Corinthians. He said, to them that are joined to the Lord, they are one in spirit with him. We became one in spirit. We became united with him in spirit. Why don't you just thank him? Because you are united with him. Yes, you are already united with him. But I put you through those, step, those eight steps to help you remain united with him. Just thank him and say, Father, I thank you because I am one in spirit with the Lord. I am one in spirit. I am joined with the Lord and I am one in spirit with him. Thank you because I am united. And thank you because by my union with him, the devil has lost his power and his authority over me. Ah, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Thank you because you are God. Thank you for the finished work on the cross. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you because you ended sin. You destroyed the nature of sin. That by your new nature, we live the new nature of life. Thank you because in Jesus, we live and function and have our identity. Thank you because we remain in him. Thank you because nothing will take us out of your hand. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for the power that is at work in us. That makes us to live above sin. That makes us to live above of reproach. I give you praise and glory. Thank you for the activation of the power. According to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, he that is able to do exceedingly abundant that we can pray, we can wish, we can think by the power that is at work in us. Thank you for your power that is at work in us in union. That we are able to live above reproach. We are able to live a life free of sin. We are able to pay the price. We are able to carry our cross and follow. Thank you for the power that is at work in us. That helps us to understand the word of God. That helps us to live by the dictates of the spirit and not of the flesh. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Now, tonight, I feel so strong in my spirit 
to pray for somebody. You are sick in your body and the sickness is taking a whole hold upon you. You have spent so much money. Place your right hand on your head and I'm ready to pray with you now because the same redemption, the same redemption that made us saved is the same work that healed us. Do you know that every time believer is sick, it's an injustice. You are paying for something that Christ has prayed for. And in the law, a man cannot be punished for an offense twice. Christ has been punished for sickness. And you are meant not to have sickness in your body. Now tonight, in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I release the healing power of God to go now and heal you from the crown of your head to the toes of your feet. And I declare you whole in the name of Jesus. I don't know how much, how many hospitals they have carried you to. I don't know somebody you are even like Lying down to listen to the message tonight because you cannot, you find it hard to sit for a long time. The healing power is flowing from the crown of your head now to the toes of your feet. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I don't know who you are. There is somebody you have an injury sometimes, and sometimes in the year you feel the pain that you it's become a bit hard for you to walk. In the name of Jesus, I command the cure now, total cure. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, he took our infirmity, nailed it to the cross, and never returned it. Therefore, it's not yours. I command the healing power of God to re be released into that leg now in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Father. Somebody, the understanding of the fact that you are united with Christ that has come into you, you will see from now, you begin to live above sin, above reproach. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And you remain in him. And in him, keep living and keep living. And as you live in him, you become more strengthened in him. God bless you till we see you again at the November School of the Spirit in Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Enjoy a glorious week in Jesus' name. Amen.